All right, and welcome back to the Inside Star Citizen Review. We have the fam here live right now. They are live, and in effect, I'm going to show you just so you can see it because I'm going to ship this over to YouTube like I always do. But I want to tell you, I'm not lying right now. Look at all that. Look at this beautiful family over here live with me. And I want to thank everybody who took the time out to join me live because it is hard to find me. It is hard. Many people don't get notified. I'm blacklisted on every single platform there is. I think it has something to do with the things that I say. I think it might have something to do with the fact that I have no filter. What do you guys think? <laughs> Look, there they are, right over there. <laughs> Santa Claus, I answered your question, by the way. Anyway, just so you know, I answered your question on how to trade, but we can't talk about that now because we're in the inside Star Citizen review. And I'm very excited about this because it's it's got something in there, a little teaser about irresponsibly gambling and I was like man I love just seeing that little teaser got me excited makes me think about the focus that's the, the shifting of the gears where they're thinking about the economy I, are you feeling it the wallet to wallet transactions coming in it's gonna give so much content to us as players something we've been asking for forever we theory crafted it way back way way back 2015 finally here and some people are like DG Get off that soapbox. Quit talking about it. It's not going to be here for a while. That quantum, that quantum's not coming for a while, but I feel it. I feel it in the air tonight. I feel it. The, the, the focus right now. Cloud Imperium is focusing on the economy. I'm seeing the rock come out, which is a new kind of mining industrial land based uh, vehicle. I'm seeing wallet to wallet transactions. I'm seeing irresponsible gambling in this video coming up here as far as the teaser. So I'm really looking forward to this. Do you feel it in the air, Cub? <laughs> Do you feel it in the air tonight, Ross? All right, enough, 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 enough. Let us watch. Let us watch. Inside Star Citizen. Love this, my favorite day. Favorite day with you guys. Up until now, the character team has been working on various things. Some high-end Tier 1 Squadron 42 characters. We have the new Hair 2.0. We've got alien races, mission givers for the Persistent Universe. We're working on various armors and clothes. But we're at the beginnings of something brand new. And that's the creation of creatures. What? <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, okay. Yeah! Apex Predators. When creating creatures in a game, there are many different approaches you could what? take at the beginning. You could start off doing something simple, for example, like fireflies or little rodents or things that are, you know, fairly simple from an AI perspective. That could be one approach. In the past, we created a void in, in that same kind of vein. Later on, we started exploring things like spa the space cows and the space whales. And while those are still going to happen, we have, are now focused on something that hopefully players and developers alike get a little more excited about, and that would be predator creatures. The f Dude, I feel like there's a whole library of creatures that we don't even know about. I hope that's the case, but that's what I'm feeling like right now. First steps of creating what is predator that? creatures. That is where where do you where do you get going? Um, for us, we decided to pick some archetypes that gave us at least some sort of direction. And these archetypes are more be animal behaviors uh, than they are necessarily visual. But this allowed us just to have some focus rather than just complete. All right, as long as they don't go super fantastical, like animated mode, they're, they're not realistic. There has to be levels of realism to this. I get that these are drawings, but I also want this to be realistic and not go completely off the deep end, completely into fantasy world. I don't want Disney. I don't want Disney now. So far, I'm just seeing the drawings. Okay. We saw Space Cow. I'm okay with Space Cow. The eggs underneath a little bit gross, but alien. Definitely different. Don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Don't know how that poor thing lays down either. This is such a hard time for pregnant space cows. There's no way they're going to be able to lay down. Maybe on their side, break a couple babies. I don't know. That's just something that's it's a bit sad for the space cow. Uh, but those little blobby things we saw in 2017, uh, you know, those aren't here yet, but we saw them. Uh, you know, like I'm wondering how many more uh, creatures there are out there. This is kind of very, very exciting to me. This is a complete blue sky, exciting. anything um, that sometimes is extremely difficult for a concept artist without having any direction. So what we did in archetypes was we we found some some archetypes and we named them like bear and 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 tiger and and, and crab things like this, but. These are not to say that's what they want to look like necessarily. These are more about 
what the thing might do. Like a bear, for example, might be content to eat fruit and not bother you unless you messed with it versus let's say a pure uh, carnivore like a tiger that's a stealth up and, and it's, it's, it's looking a little too dragon age right there like some of these things i want to go back and, and have these things edited out these are my feelings right now i'm telling you some of these look a little too fan- fantasy based some of these look a little too fantasy based uh or or with the uh wow kind of inspirations behind it you know what i'm saying like it's not feeling it's not feeling realistic right now uh i get we're on the drawing board but that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. That's kind of how I'm feeling. Fam. You know, kills prey, and that's that's how it lives. So I know it's still these concept, just gave though. us still a starting point where we could start making initial. <laughs> I like when I when I when I start talking on the real, like my feelings, right? And it's not necessarily aligned with like pro star citizens. People start getting a little antsy in the chat. They're like, "Listen, listen, DG, don't, 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 don't DG, DG. It's just concept. I know, I know. That's cool. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. What skeleton? A stork it's like skeletor and a stork did it together skeleton oh, sorry that's that's not correct that's not correct i'm sorry about that fail concepts um and <laughs> as with you know any concepts we're going to make a lot more concepts than we're actually going to make final models of <laughs> So after a couple rounds of reviews, we distilled down some of the ideas we were most... I got to show chat for a second. It's so good. Space Stork. <laughs> By the power of Grayskull. <laughs> most excited about. Uh, and from there, we decided to focus first on two different predators from that group. First being a creature that we might encounter in the pyro Oh, system. wait. Let's see what I this like. Is- All right. If I had to pick one of these four. Let's see here. I would have to say bottom left is interesting appeals to me like scorpion spider large crab scorpion spider is interesting bottom right kind of appeals to me not quite sure about death centipede in the top right top left reminds me of a mech like top left reminds me of like a, a, a robotic mech Thinking, thinking Titan in the shell or something right there. You can see the influences from other animes and things between, you know, when the artists uh, get down and do their stuff. Like, it's really interesting. This is a, a, a creature that we're terming the pyro crab. So she's uh, kind of a queen of a, of a hive and we'll have some sort of baby ones that all have some bioluminescence. And one way you might encounter this is the large queen can actually hunker down. Oh, okay. Now, see, I like how they bring it to life like that. You add the colors and okay, now now I'm starting to see it a little bit better. Like that's that, that was the thing, that black and white drawing thing. Uh, it, it, I just, I couldn't make the next leap. And now I'm, I'm seeing like the, those, te- those tendrils with the like, you know, watch out. Get something from that. <laughs> Get something from that. Down and sort of uh, yeah, disguise yourself. I'm, as I'm a, digging a group that. Of rocks where I, I'm you actually digging that. Right up on one and not even know it's there until it actually reveals itself. The yeah. second one we wanted to focus on is a creature that you would find on the planet Microtech. Uh, Microtech, being a terraformed world, uh, has an appearance more like Earth, where you see pine trees and things like this. So we took a much different approach to the way we designed that creature. Furries. This creature we're terming is more Whoa. a result of maybe some genetic mani- All right, that 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 is some scary stuff right there. I'm giving that an A plus right there. Just in its initial concept. That is an A plus <laughs> yeah, right, Wampa. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like <laughs> this is scary right here. I cannot wait to see creatures on different planets and moons. It is going to be so amazing when this starts to happen. Walking around and having to worry about being hunted by predators on alien planets and moons is going to be bad ass. I cannot wait. Manipulation of, of different uh, DNA from Earth creatures. So there are some more familiar elements to this animal. Oh my so god. Now you've seen the- Someone's having a bad day right there. What's ah! <laughs> with that mouth, man? Ah! There we are. Ah! first two predators that we're going to be pursuing um what's next for us well we're already working on creating a pipeline to to make these things a reality (laughs) in game what that means is ai design animation and characters will all come together to bring life to these things we hope you're as excited about these as we are and hope to show you more soon
in the upcoming Alpha 3.10, several existing locations are getting upgraded. Is Jared okay? Jared, please reach out to me, dude. Like, I keep feeling like Execute and I from Info Runners talked about this on the last podcast, where like every appearance Jared seems to make on every new appearance of, of Inside Star Citizen, Star Citizen Live, he seems to be getting like it just <laughs> worried about Jared. Can we just ask Jared if he's okay? <laughs> this is soup kitchen Jared. Yeah, maybe he's just super chill. I mean, like, he is going complete, like, you know, chillax mode, maybe. Maybe that's it. Maybe. I, I feel worried. Like, I'm starting to get worried about Jared. ...that set the stage for future content, whether that's solicit racing and gambling and Grimex, new missions and commercial opportunities and new Babbage, or revamped derelicts that do more than look great, but also provide shelter from the elements outside. Oh... All right, all right, now we're talking my gig. In 3.9, we introduced New Babbage Landing Zone, but it was not quite complete yet. We still had one or two things that we needed to add. One of those things being Microtech's flagship store, the Factory Line. The Factory Line is the premier store for Microtech located in the heart of New Babbage. One of the ideas that we really wanted to convey through this kind of sub-style of the Microtech branding was this is the location where Microtech sells all of their consumer and enterprise products that are at the cutting edge of technology. From the moment that you enter the factory line, you'll be greeted with the lobby and the lobby is there to give you a sense of the experience that you're about to go on. From the lobby, you'll descend down a glass staircase into the commercial floor. The commercial floor is when you'll find all things Microtech from the Moby glass to the Reverie AR contact lens, all things that you can kind of purchase and will be able to purchase in the future. Then we have on the third floor, the Fikri Ampi. By the way, customizable Moby glasses with different colors or different abilities would be awesome. Like just throwing out some new theory craft. I know some people hate that, but I love it. I love new ideas. I would I would do stuff considering like making the Moby glass have different tranches of elite. Just making different types of Moby glasses that cost different amounts that could that could essentially do some things that maybe the other Moby glasses couldn't. You could probably see a lot of people cry about that, but I don't care. I like to see people grind and do work for uber uber special flashies in the game. You know what I'm saying? That would be, kind of be cool. Theatre, named after Microtech's founder's older brother, this space serves double duty as also a not only a corporate showcase for all of their corporate technologies, but also can be converted into an amphitheater for all of Microtech's keynotes. Amphitheater for Microtech's keynotes, as if there's going to be like a live convention. It almost feels like they're they're putting in their own little kind of leak, doing something there. They're talking about you know being able to have it this like an amphitheater. Why would you need that? You know you'd need it for announcements or being some type of event. That's kind of neat. I dig that. I dig that. Right? Could be like an online citizen con. That would be awesome. And effigy. Thank you. Welcome, Pizza McGee. Pizza McGee. My mom is welcoming you with her knives. Welcome to the family. We're not crazy. Uh, but yeah, maybe like a little bit of a yeah. Could be like a citizen con, yeah. Nubifier was speculating it. Damn it. I mean I wasn't first. Ah still not special family. <laughs> What we wanted to achieve the team for the derelicts is that when the players do discover them, we wanted to give a sense of story <laughs> and <laughs> history an to this crash site. Once upon a time, there, there was a crew that used to live on this uh, this derelict, um, and, and, and we wanted the player to come across them and, and, and discover like they've been in the terrain for, for years and years to, to come. 
So recently with the Planet VTech 4, um, the Planet team has updated all of the height maps on the planets and moons. However, that has come into a little bit of an impact because we've had to go and validate all the POIs on the terrain due to the height maps, so they've now become an, uh, invalid. So we've gone over them. While as we've done that, we've actually had the chance to kind of refresh them, add them up a little bit and take a little bit of time to give them some love that, that they needed. Looking so damn good. One it's of the cooler so things we good. did with the derelicts is, um, as a team, we chose to split the interior and exterior of the object containers for the derelicts. This was to help with the place that that came online, so that we're culling the weather uh, inside the derelicts. So these are now acting as shelters uh, for the players to get All away right. if it's too hot, if it's too cold, uh, and then we're adding this additional function onto the derelicts, not just as to explore, but as to get an escape from the weather. Wow. So we've also turned on the real-time cube maps. Uh, this is going to give a much accurate lighting read inside the derelicts, um, and it's going to give the overall inside of the derelicts a much nicer feel to them. We've also had the opportunity to go back over and give them much uh, like needed love. We've been adding these uh, like mud uh, skirt-like rocks uh, around the actual derelicts themselves. And I get it. I get what's going on. They're doing it to different derelicts around different planets and moons. They're putting a little bit more attention to them. They're adding a little bit more. Looks really good. And the skeptic in me right now says that these things should happen naturally. Oh, wait a second. Is DG spitting out a truth bomb? Yes. These things should happen naturally when there are fights anywhere above a planet or on a planet and just, you know, these things drop and they should do this automatically. I'm going to take it another step further. I'm going to take it even one more step to the insane mode and say that after you've died, your ship literally legit crashes, becomes a derelict and derelict should just be something that happens naturally. That's just something that should be there without any work done by artists. That should just be something that happens. This is to give them a much better feeling as it's more integrated with the planet Serene. And uh, it gives them also like a sense of direction. Uh, as if they've kind of like crash landed on the surface and like ripping up the terrain. Until it gets salvaged up. Right, Ross. Right, dude. These things should naturally occur with player population and NPC ships that get blasted to pieces in atmosphere, above space that make it through atmosphere, ground wars. These things should naturally happen and focus and energy should be put upon that. And as far as the artwork being done that we're seeing here, I'm not dismissing that. What I'm saying is that this should happen naturally anyway due to weather and due to texturing that they've designed. We already saw that in, in Inside Star Citizen two, two or three weeks ago where the, the materials weathered, the materials got old, they showed the wear and tear. This should happen on all things happening across the planet, or the moon, and this should all happen naturally. All energy should be put into these things happening so that, that this is just something that naturally happens randomly, sporadically around a planet or a moon. Sure, you want to dot a, a few in there that you can never move. What about the salvage? Then you got to talk about long term. You got to talk about the people that are salvaging on the planets and moons, right? You should be able to salvage this, which means it won't be on there very long. It won't. It won't be on there very long. If you've got if you've got people that are into the salvage, uh, we're, we were talking about salvaging last week, and how we'd like to see that. That we would like to see that game mechanic as soon as possible. Cloud Imperium currently like in the theory craft beginning stages of it. Uh, they've flushed out some of the mechanics involved with salvaging. We're not quite sure it's going to be put in eventually. I don't think it's going to be way, way, way out there like a lot of content. Uh, uh, Star Citizen content creators are saying they're like, oh, it's never going to happen. I, I've heard many I won't name who. But they've said, oh, oh, God, salvage is never going to happen. No, it'll happen. People understand at Cloud Imperium, and Chris understands it, that they want that gameplay as soon as possible. Salvage is, they're going to push for salvaging mechanics in the game ASAP. This goes hand in hand with what we're seeing right here. So there's been a lot more focused on there as well. We've also used um, the terrain blending as well on the shader, so that we've blended from the skirts to the terrain. And then these are also 
allow us to use them on more different surfaces if it was on like snowy like on Stanton 4 or if it's on like uh, Delamar or something like that you can pick up that terrain as, and, and we're still using the same uh, OC on, on each planet. Oh yeah! There's a lot of things going on in the future of Grim Hex that we needed to prepare for. That's right. We're getting ready, boys. Yar, are you getting ready for what's going to be coming? I'm like, I'm feeling this. I've been waiting for this. I have a video about gambling and theory crafting on gambling from 2016 that I was talking about. And people were like, no, that's never going to happen, DG. You're being, you're way too out there. This isn't even in the game yet. Why are you talking about it? Well, this is why I'm talking about it right here for all the haters out there. Grim Hex is a very, very illegal place where people... You, you will be able to gamble anyway with wallet-to-wallet -wallet transactions hitting in 3.10. People don't realize that right now, but there's going to be some gambling that happen naturally, occurring naturally with wallet-to-wallet -wallet transactions. Oh, yeah. There's going to be some fight clubs. It's going to happen. It's going to happen whether you like it or not because wallet-to-wallet -wallet transactions are coming up. And, and regardless of what they're going to show us, which I'm really excited about... It's going to happen. It's happening. People come in to do all kinds of illegal trading, illegal betting, maybe some really shady deals, and it's not a really nice place to be. So for the racing kiosk, uh, we knew that these illegal races were going to need a lot of sort of betting and uh, a mission giver and places to watch it from. So what we've done is we've taken one of the uh, sort of more rundown and forgotten areas of Grim Hex and kind of updated it to look super nice. Nice. So we have the racing shop or betting shop. Oh, Grim Hex has put some lipstick on for us, boys. Grim Hex is putting some lipstick on. <laughs> yeah. What and what we've done with that place is we've really jazzed it up with lots of really, really cyberpunk lights, so very bright pink, purple, uh, lots of betting kiosks and screens that could like maybe in the future just yeah. display kinds of informations for the race, uh, standings for the season. Then inside the shop, you'll have area that Luca Brunt just oversees everything. And he's just going to be sitting there on his desk, which is just surrounded by, by screens, overlooking all kinds of information through the sentence. As Luca Brunt runs the book and organizes the underground races that have become popular among the asteroids that drift close to Grim Hex, if you do intend to make a wager, be aware that the nine tails take paying off debts very seriously. So they're going to tie it in with some NPC mission stuff. Okay. Okay. System for all these legal races. And just outside of his shop, you'll see the standings and a bunch of really riggedy walkways that we've added where people are going to sit there, watch the races from this huge window that they have in front of them. There's even a little VIP area, uh, places to what? sell beer and people are just going to be able to like come in there and sit in this. Is this for real? They're going to have races with like NPC mixed with players or just NPC or am I misunderstanding this? Cause I'm getting really excited right now. Is this actually going to be happening and they're going to show in the, in the actual polls up there. Is that what's going to be happening fam? Uh, just players for now. Okay. Ryu just players. I I'm telling you what, I am very excited about this. I am very, very Excited. In the future, says Dutch Oven. In the future. Coming soon, TM. It's a really dingy place and be able to watch these races happening around in the asteroids. Dude, and I awesome. want them to feel a little bit uncomfortable about it, but know that they got to do, uh, come in there to do their business and just bet on the races and make sure that they're not going to get stabbed in the back. So what we learned this week? Oh, that was Well, tight. we learned that today's new locations are tomorrow's new opportunities. That the long path to building new pipelines for creature creation will involve several disciplines working together. And that the space crab used to be so tiny and innocent, but clearly Pyro changes a crustacean. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Oh, Tune Pyro. To Star Citizen Live. All right, so those things might appear on Pyro. It sounds like, wow, we learned a lot on this one, guys. We learned a lot on this one. As we kick off Alien Week with the lore team, and of course, we'll see you right back here next week. I would never have learned that without Jared there. 